Hello, sports fans and baseball fans and out-of-the-park fans. I got another out-of-the-park game for you, and this time it's another league that I started up really again just for the perp. Well, partially for the purposes of my channel and putting up videos, but also to see what would happen in this uh, league. I have made a Super AL. This is the season right here that we're going to load. It's a Super AL. It's 12 teams, 11 of them are actual great AL teams, American League teams from the past, 11 great AL teams from the past, and then one mistake team, because I had originally meant to make 12 great AL teams from the past, but I accidentally left one team undesignated. And so what happened was the computer made a make-believe team with make-believe players and added it to my Super AL. So let's take a look at this league. Um, we will go to the uh, standings. I haven't started uh, the season yet. So everybody is zero and zero. And so what you can see is here are the teams that are in the league. The real teams are the 1975 Boston Red Sox, the 2002 Anaheim Angels, the 2005 Chicago White Sox, which I will be the manager of, the 2001 uh, Seattle Mariners, who won 116 regular season games, the 1954 Indians, the 1987 Minnesota Twins, the 1924 Senators, the 1927 Yankees, the 1970 Orioles, the 1985 Tigers, and the 1982 Brewers. Now, I want to point something out. This team is the San Francisco Red Flash. This was a team, like I said, that the computer made up and it made up the players for it. And a friend of mine, Chris Dufour, who is in several of my videos, you can go back and check, he played the um, NLCS with me of my uh, Card and Dice Baseball, Stratomatic Baseball Tournament, and the World Series. I suggest you go back and check out those games for as far as we are. But he suggested that since it was a make-believe team with make-believe players, that I actually make him and me and so i did that so uh, what happens i i don't know if you can actually make your own player in out of the park so what i did was i took a player that was as close as i could get um and rename them because you can rename players in this in this game so here's chris dufour my main man chris dufour bats left as you can see which he does in real life and he, ha he was a very good baseball player, uh, baseball and softball when we were growing up. So a lot of these ratings do fit him quite well. Outfield range, 60 out of 80. Um, uh, first at um, left field, he's a 60 out of 80. Right field, uh, 60 out of 80. This was for his uh, defensive ratings and his position ratings. And center field, he's a 40 out of 80. So he's only about a 50% but you know whatever and then at first base he's 30 so i got as close as i could and then um if we go back to the uh american league i'm also on the team as a pitcher and so here i am uh number 66 and um so i'll be pitching for the uh san what are these guys? <laughs> I don't even <laughs> forgot their name already. Um, stand, let's go to standings. The San Francisco Red Flash. So that is where we are. Uh, this league is going to be very interesting. I want to see how these teams finish. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. If we go to uh the team and then reports and information and then we go to preseason predictions here are the preseason predictions for all of the teams and as you can see they've got my white Sox, 2005 world champion white Sox, finishing 51 and 111. of course again this is a super league so every team is is 
uh, technically good, except for the San Francisco Red Flash, who will be 54 and 108. Um, but um, you can see what it's predicting. It's predicting the Seattle Mariners will win the, the uh, division, win the league. And the 1970 Orioles will finish three games behind them. The 75 Red Sox will finish third with 94 wins. And the 27 Yankees will finish fourth, one game behind the Red Sox. And uh, like um, quite a few games behind the Mariners. I'm not great at quick math. So we're going to play game one of the season in my White Sox season. So we review depth charts and then play the game against the Indians. We are starting off against the Indians. So we're gonna have Mark Burley on the mound. Um, and uh, let's see, it looks like I'm missing a player. So, and this is the 54 Indians, remember. So not good. Um, who am I missing? I am missing a right fielder. So, um, yeah, Tom Bernanski, we're going to put him down in here and we're going to put him in right field. Now, you'll probably say to yourself, Tom Bernanski was not on the 2005 White Sox. And that's true, he wasn't. And I'm only the manager of this team. I have a general manager who makes trades. And uh, Unfortunately for us, my general manager decided it would be a good trade to send uh, Bobby Jenks and uh, Scott P Pizednik to the 87 Twins for Tom Bernanski. Frankly, I don't think that was a good deal, but that's what he did. So let's get on with the game and see what happens. And let me see if I can going to reduce the sound here just in case okay so you've got Mike Garcia hitting against Burley or no or Bernanski hitting against Mike Garcia so we are the visiting team and the game is underway And he's going to ground out to first base. Bernanski's out. Um, oh, and Yastrzemski is at first base for the Indians. So I guess they made a trade and they got Carl Yastrzemski. Nice. Not nice for the 75 Red Sox, although who knows who they got. I'll have to go back and check that out. Paul Canerco up. Pauly. And they walk him. That brings up Frank Thomas, the big man, and they walk him. And that brings up Jermaine Dye. We got two on and one out and they strike out Dye for the second out. And here's Carl Everett. And Carl Everett's gonna ground out and we get no runs despite getting two men on. And then uh, Mark Burley, there he is pitching against Bobby Avia. And he strikes out. And then up comes Carl Yaz. There he is, the Yaz. And he hits it right up the middle for a base hit. And they got Al Rosen up, man on. And Al Rosen gave it a ride, but it looks like it's going to be a fly out. And it is. So there's two down. And that brings up Al Smith. And he is out. So no runs for the Indians. And up comes Joe Creedy. Loved Joe Creedy, I got to tell you. All right, so he's going to fly out to right field. And uh, up comes A.J. Przinski. Everybody hated Przinski, even the guys on his team. But we don't hate him because he just got a double. So Przinski doubling. And that brings up Bawan Uribe. I remember that guy and he struck out. So there's two down and Willie Harris. Willie Harris is gonna get a base hit. 
Is, is Brzezinski going to score? No. Of course not. So that brings up Bruno. Brunanski is going to be out. So we get no runs. I don't know how close we really were. Somewhat close. Mark Burley is pitching. And he's out. First, he gets the first out of the inning. Um, Wally Westlake. And Wally Westlake is going to fly out to right. And that brings up the next guy. I hit it too quickly. I don't know who it was, but whoever it was just doubled. Dave Philly. Dave Philly doubled. So, runner at second, two down. Jim Hegan up, the catcher. Jim Hegan, and he struck out. So, Burley on top of his game. The ace of the 2005 White Sox staff. And here comes Pauly Canerco. Pauly! Pauly is doubling into the corner. And he's sliding into second safe. So, yeah, nice double for Paul Canerco. And that brings up the big hurt, Frank Thomas. And he is going to fly out to left. One down, Canerco at second, Jermaine Die up. And that's going to be, um, well, he moves the runner over to third, but he's, he's out, so it's two down. And Carl Everett up. And Carl Everett steps aside and lets Pauly Canerco score to give us a one nothing lead on a pass ball. And now it doesn't really matter what Everett does. And he strikes out, so it's a good thing. Thank God for that pass ball. So Mark Burley goes back to work against the 54 Indians. And Uribe is going to throw the first batter of the inning out. Up steps Bobby Avila. And he is going to ground out to third, it looks like. No, it's an error. Who is that error on? Who made that? Yeah, Canerico can't come up with it. I think it's a, well, no, it looks like they were going to give it to Creedy. So, and there's a base hit up the middle that's going to score the tying run at, on top of an error that puts the uh, batter at second. So, man at second, one down, tie game, Al Rosen up. Then Al Rosen's going to fly out. That's two down, and here comes L. E. Smith. Or Al Smith, as he likes to be called. And he doubles. He's going to double the run home. That's the second run for the Indians, and they lead 2-1. to one. Two to 2-1, one, and here comes Larry Doby. And Doby is going to possibly... No, another error. We're making errors left and right. What is going on? All right, so it's 3-1. I mean, not good. No wonder we're going to be 51 and 111. Wally Westlake, the DH, is up. And that's going to be a fly. No, it's going to be a single. Are you kidding me? How unlucky can a guy get? All right, so it's 4-1 Indians. We are really, I don't know if we're coming back from this. A lot of these runs aren't earned, though. That's good for Burley, but not really good for us. We're down 4-1, to one, and uh, Creedy is up. Creedy with a base hit. Good. Of course, we have to capitalize on that to the biggest extent. Brzezinski is up. He had a hit last time, and he's going to get another one right here. Second double of the game for Brzezinski. I'm going to say no. So we're going to have runners at second and third. We need base runners and runs. We don't need to score individual runs at the uh, expense of trying to get thrown out. So Uribe is up, and Uribe is going to fly out. And uh, the run doesn't come home, so it's Willie Harris's chance. Willie Harris. Willie Harris is going to be out. So 
We're back to the top of the lineup with Bruno. And Bruno strikes out. Thank you, Brunanski. All right, so we don't score anything there. Not good. Um, Jim Hegan, the catcher, facing Burley. And that's an out. One down. And up steps George Strickland. George Strickland looks like he's going to fly out to center. We are in the bottom of the fourth with the 1954 Indians ahead of the 2005 Chicago White Sox, 4-1. to one. Bobby Avila batting against Burley. And he rips a single right up the middle. And here comes Carliaz. And that's an out. So, still four to one. We got to get on the board. We, well, we're on the board, but we got to get on the board three more times with Canerco grounding out to first. That brings up the big hurt. And the big hurt is going to fly out to the big center field, and that's going to be one, uh, two down. And here comes Jermaine Dye. And he held up, so he's walking. Could use a home run here, Everett. I mean, just telling you. And he gets a base hit. I mean, that's good, right? Again, I got to hold him up. Can't take a chance of getting thrown out. And Joe Creedy is up at the plate. And Joe Creedy is out. So we don't get any runs. In the top of the fifth, we go to the bottom of the fifth, losing 4-1 to one to the 54 Indians. Still got Burley out there. His stamina bar is still pretty good, so he's got the stamina. He's just, he's already given up four runs, and we can't seem to get anything off Mike Garcia. Two down, and that brings up Larry Doby. And Larry Doby is going to pop out. Pop out! So the Indians get nothing in the fifth. We go to the top of the sixth. Brzezinski up to plate. And he is going to ground out. It's the first time he's been out. And you got Juan Uribe. Juan Uribe is going to be out, it looks like. He is. And up to the plate is Willie Harris. And Willie Harris gets a single up the middle. Of course, putting a, a rally together here doesn't seem likely. Bernanski is up. And that's probably going to be played, and it is. So that's the third and final out that inning. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Burley out there still against Wally Westlake. And Burley should throw him out. Let's hope. And he does. Next batter. Next batter. That looks like a ground ball to Uribe, and it is. And it's an out. Uribe, a ground out to Uribe, and it was. And Jim Hegan, the catcher, up at the plate. And he's going to rip a double. I mean, he's just playing out, ripping a double. Hegan at second with two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. And Strickland up. And Strickland is out. So we go to the top of the seventh. It's getting late. Canerco is up. Mike Garcia still out there pitching. I'm not surprised. He does walk Canerco, though. Here comes Thomas. And Thomas swung at an inside pitch, it looked like, a bad pitch, and he grounded into a double play. With two down, we have Jermaine Dye up. And he is going to fly out on a great look, what looks like a great play by the center fielder, Doby. So we're going to the bottom of the seventh, and Burley is still not... Um, out of gas. Now, one thing I did do is I made the um, I made starting pitchers be able to pitch 30% longer 
on stamina than they actually had, and I made the relievers in the league. And this is all starters and relievers. I made the uh, relievers in the league be able to pitch 20% longer for stamina because I think the stamina ratings in this game are really kind of not um, – I don't want to say they're not accurate, but they're not good. They're hard to play around because Burley would already be tired and out of the game, and I don't think that's realistic. So we got Garcia pitching against Everett. And he's going to fly out. We only need three runs. Come on, guys. Joe Creedy. Creedy is up. And he flies out. And then Przinsky is up to plate. And he's going to rip another double. Is that another double? No, it's a single. So Creedy, or uh, Przinsky is three for four with two doubles and a single. Uribe up to plate. And he is going to be out. So we don't get anything there. They're into his, he's into his bullpen. I'm going to let um, Burley try to finish the game. And that's a ground ball to Uribe, and he takes care of it. One down. Bur or Burley pitching to the next man. Next man. And that's Canerco. Pauly makes the play. Two down, and up steps Wally Wesley. And he is going to pop out. So it comes down to this. We're in the top of the ninth. We have got to have three runs. Willie Harris is not going to bat, can I just tell you. We need a right-handed batter to uh, bat right here. And, uh, yeah, let's make it a Gucci because I think he's probably going to be the best guy we got. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to pinch hit a Gucci. And they brought in Hal Newhauser. And I don't know. They might have brought him in last inning. But anyway, he's a Hall of Famer, so not good. Bernanski is up. Bernanski looks like he's grounding out, and he is. So it's two down. We're down to our last out of the game, and Canerco is the main man to get it. And, uh, yeah, he does. So he flies out to right, and we lose the game 4-1. to one. Not good. Take a look at the box scores here. But uh, that's what we got here, and... Uh, Burley, Burley, man. I mean, he pitched well. Look at that. No earned runs. All four runs were unearned because we made a ton of errors. So, um, that's the, uh, another look at the box scores. And Garcia went seven and two-thirds, allowed eight hits and no earned runs. His run was unearned, too. And then Newhauser went an inning and a third and sealed it up. So we go back to, let's take a look at the standings now. Well, let's, let's finish today and then look at the standings. So you can see that the losers in the game one of the season were the 87 Twins, the 70 Orioles, San Francisco Red Flash, that fine ball club, us, the 85 Tigers, and the Washington Senators. And let's just take a look. Before we leave, Chris Dufour, let's take a look at him. Um, all right, let's go back to uh, I never know how to get back to where I, oh, here we go. Standings. Standings. Let's look at the red flash. There they are. And let's look at statistics batting. Uh, let's.
let's go to players and let's see what do four is doing Chris Dufour is no at bats. I mean, he had four at bats and no hits. And he struck out twice. All right, well, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, we will be reporting from this season from uh, time to time. But um, that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.